Well, 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 I've been walking through the woods here in an undisclosed location and I see a lattice boom sticking through the trees. That boom is connected to a big old chicken. This is a Bantam C350 crawler crane. With, I believe, a 353 Detroit diesel in it. And looks to me like she's been parked about 20 years. She retired from building that lake. Don't know much history on the machine. Our best guess is that it dug the lake and they parked it here and shut it down and never came back. She's not in the best shape, but I've seen worse. So uh, I guess the idea here today is gonna see if I can't get this thing fired up and ultimately, eventually, walk it out of here, which is quite a ways from where we're at. How far is this to the nearest road? Where you came in on? Yeah. Oh, it's gotta be two miles. So the property owner says it's probably a probably a little over a mile to the nearest road, so the old, the old spring chicken here, she's gonna have to stretch her legs. After a half an hour of bushwhacking here, we can actually see this side of the machine again. Give you a shot inside the cab here. Got your two different brakes. These are weeds, those came factory. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't, not 100% what the controls do. I'll have to play around and figure it out. At least it has a seat. Also managed to uncover the actual drag line bucket here, which from what I can see of it doesn't look to be in too bad a shape, so that'll be a priority down the road here. One thing great about this machine is it's got these really nice big wide crawler pads on here. I'm betting these are probably 30 or 36 inch. They're pretty good sized pads. So it should have nice and light ground pressure if it moves. Anyways, let's turn our uh, attention to that old noisemaker under the hood. So back here at the engine, the dipstick looks good. It's nice and black, but there doesn't appear to be any water in it. It's not way over the full mark, so that's a good sign. I'm assuming a fuel tank. It doesn't smell like much of nothing, so there might not be any fuel in it. I think we can climb up on top and there's an access panel up here. We can get some access to the top of the engine. So on top of the machine here, we got a trap door. We got us a three cylinder money to noise converter here. Check out the radiator while we're up here. I can't really see down in there too good. We got water, that's a good sign. Ooh, that hose is rough. That's seen better days. Looks like the mice chewed it to the point where it's leaking. So that'll need replaced, but it'll work for today. So I was able to stick a bar on the engine and confirm that it turned over. It was pretty tight at first, but I think I got it to make a full revolution. So that's good enough for me to proceed. Um, I'll go ahead and pull this valve cover off. It's just a couple bolts. These Detroits are notorious for getting injectors hanging up on them, and when they shut off, they shut off at full throttle. So if you fire it up with the injector stuck, it's gonna go straight to wide open throttle and sound like the gates of hell are opening. Bigger stuff, I like the cats. I got the, the small stuff, so I'll bobcat stuff. But... You like them with the new stuff? I used to love the Ingersoll Rand stuff, but since they got bought by Doosan, I do not care for them. The newest stuff, no. 
No, the Kubota engine was good. Yeah, what do they got in them now? Perkins? They don't do a whole lot, they're just holding on the cover. Mm -hmm. How do you get to that? That's what I'm looking at, huh? It's a freaking flathead. Is it really? Yeah. No wonder we couldn't That's get it. It was so round. <laughs> It just, it didn't no seem, wonder you can't fit a socket down in there. You're not supposed to. It didn't seem chewed up. There was that other one. Oh, it's a, a, it's a, it's a screw head. Screw head. Is the other one the same way? Probably. Way? It looked to me like it was loose though, but maybe. All right. Well, I think the valve cover should come off now. And look at that. It's like brandy new. So what always happens with these things? This is your fuel rack here, and the governor runs it from over here and the injectors will hang up and this rack should turn freely. They're probably all tight at this point though. Well, that one's already loose. There's a look down inside before we mess with anything. So the fuel rack pushes on these little plungers down here, which run inside of the injector. Uh, we're going to pull these fuel lines off, pull the uh, rockers off, and then that's your injector right there. And we got to spray that down and hopefully get it loose and freed up. We'll spray all these out with brake clean before we reinstall them too. I am okay with that. Say that. Hundred foot pounds. Pretty darn snug. Do you mechanically move them to see if to free them up? Yeah, we'll get there. All right, we'll spray brake clean down inside of these ports here, flush out all that nastiness, and then fill it full of penetrating oil. You can see this one here is already compressed down. That's the situation it shut off in. Probably not down all the way though. Oh yeah, I can smell that old fuel in my hands now. It stinks. I think that one's down all the way. Uh, where's that set of, oh, this vice grips. Where'd those go? Right in front of you. Trying to pull that injector back up. Ooh, that one's tough. Man. They're usually not stuck too bad. moved a little bit. A few more times of that up and down should have it freed up, hopefully. Of course. All the way down to the ground? Can you go all the way? Yep, that sounded like.
All right, we got all three injectors freed up again. The governor is moving. Looks as though it's in the working order from what I can tell, but anytime you start one of these old Detroits, you're better off to throw a pair of vice grips on the rack like this and you can throttle it manually with those things. And then if governor works, that'll still be just fine. Um, the other thing you wanna do before you wanna try and fire one of these up is get the intake opened up so that you can manually close the air off to it if need be, if it would try to still stick and run away on you. Being as that the injectors are now freed up and working, we shouldn't have any of those issues, but uh, better to err on the side of caution. But we are very close to trying to fire this thing up. Anyway, I mentioned before that anytime you wanna start one of these, you wanna have something to choke off the air to it in case you'd need to. But uh, this one actually has a built-in air flapper, so an emergency shutoff essentially. So in the event that this thing would try to run away, all we gotta do is go like this. And that just shut a big flapper inside of there, which chokes off air to that supercharger. And then, uh, or it's actually a blower. I think there's a, a th whole thing about those not being superchargers, but basically it's a supercharger. Anyway, uh, it'll shut off air and shut down the engine if you do that. So we gotta reset it before we can start it. So it should be ready to go. All right, so we're close to firing up here, but uh, we're gonna have to, I got a temporary tank to try to get this thing started because if there is any fuel left in the real tank, it's long past its prime. So yeah, temporary tank. Okay. So the dogs don't eat them. Hey, we're almost ready to fire this up. No way. Yeah. Yeah, I pulled the engine out myself and tore it He's down. So and Matt, uh, I gave Matt a few pointers. And, uh, did, he, did he say it was in pretty good condition? Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't, he didn't think it was going to run. So he, we're hooking up a temporary fuel line right now, and we're going to fire it up in the next 10 minutes. Hopefully. Take a video of it. I want to see oh, it. Oh, it's all he's videoing, but I'll video it too. All right, I got me a temporary tank set up here with just a couple gallon of fuel in it. Oh. Turn that valve on. Now that should be coming down here into our main filter housing. And I'm going to go ahead and drain these until it starts to run out with some clean fuel. Yeah, see all that water coming out of there? That's what we don't want. Front row. Well, we might have to bypass the filter. That's what I should have grabbed a pick while I was up there. Yeah, it's all those mud daubers. Anytime there's a little hole like that, they always love to build a nest in there. There we got more water coming out of this one too. So both of these filters have been dripping water for a while. So we're gonna let them keep going for a bit. Well, it's time to perform a smoke test. We got fuel bled all the way up through this thing, so uh, we should be pretty much ready to just touch this battery and see if this thing's going to catch on fire. Hopefully, the answer is no. I don't even know if this system is 12 volt or 24. I can't see an ID tag on the starter. So we're just going to start out with 12, and if that don't work, we'll move. Well, nothing sparking or arcing, so that's a good sign. All right, so we were just looking at the wiring here, going down to the starter, and it seems to be all intact. It should be this button right here, should be the, uh, the go switch. This lever is your throttle. So, kind of leave that somewhere in the middle. I'm just gonna bump the button and see if we got some juice here. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's gonna work. We just need to clean up our battery connections. All right, well, I think it's actually 24 volt, so I went and grabbed another battery. Let's uh, see if it goes now. Go ahead, bump it. Oh, oh yeah. She's gonna run. I got a good feeling. All right, everybody ready? I think this thing's gonna wanna go. We might have an air pocket in the fuel system, so do have a little bit of the good stuff here. And uh, yeah, we'll see if she's gonna go. Contact.
on, baby. Keep, keep going. I stalled it. It purrs like a kitten. I get it. To me, it sounds good. I don't know. Yeah, oh yeah, it doesn't sound bad at all. It's, it's hitting on all three. I, no, it's Detroit, man. That's, they're not a lot of power, but they are a lot of reliability. They always run. If they spin, they run. Yeah, contact. I'm thinking we must have run out of fuel. What do you guys think about that? That was impressive. That thing just fired right up. I'm very happy with that. Sounded like it ran out of fuel a second ago. I had it barely idle in though, so that could also be the problem. Might have just needed the snot revved out of it like Detroit's do. Basically, we're just gonna go over everything on this machine now, soak it down with penetrating oil, try to get all the linkages working again and clutches freed up, and then uh, you know, we gotta start thinking about trying to lift this boom up and getting the bucket off the ground and going from there. It's getting exciting. Well, we just spent a bit of time here lubricating all these controls, trying to get them all freed up and the corresponding clutches. I think we got them pretty good. I don't really know what any of them do yet. I'm pretty sure one of these two is the swing. I think it's this guy, not positive. Really couldn't tell you yet. So we're just gonna have to get it fired up and figure it out. I think these guys are the tracks, maybe. I don't know. This guy's the master clutch. So that's disengaged, that's engaged. Yeah, let's see if we can't uh, raise this boom up out of the brush. Well, it mysteriously shut off on us there last time we had her running, so we're gonna try to fire it up again and uh, see if it's gonna pop off. We're gonna try to maybe lift the boom up and work some of the functions. Go ahead and give her contact. Yeah, that's why I think it's just a bubble in the fuel system. Go ahead. Well, we found that it was sounding like it was running out of fuel because it was running out of fuel. I hadn't noticed how low that tank got. The way I have it rigged up right now, we're not returning the excess fuel back to the tank. It's going into the machine tank. So therefore we're going through quite a bit of it. Go ahead. All right, hold on. All right, you should go now. Give her.
sight for sore eyes there. You guys got to imagine how long it's been since the last time that boom has uh, lifted up in the air like that. But it's uh, it's good and bad. It's good that uh, the, the hoist system is working, but it's bad actually because I'm not using the boom up function to lift the boom. I'm just engaging the master clutch here and there's a there's a clutch that's stuck um, that I'm not able to get freed up yet and that's the reason the boom is lifting actually I'm just trying to engage the the main clutch and it's it's lifting the boom so we're gonna have to get that thing freed up and I, I heat and beat and heat and beat and I can't get this thing moving yet no I can't really wind up where I'm out there so I'm hitting it with the side of the hammer right, you ready yeah I think anyway. I don't think it's gonna matter at this point. Mm. Alright guys, well that is a wrap for day one here. This machine is about five and a half hours from my house, so it's kind of a kind of a big deal to get here. But uh, trying to use my time wisely. Big first accomplishment there. The thing runs. The thing will move. We have that one clutch for the boom hoist still stuck. That's why every time I engage the main clutch, that's when the boom was going up. I wasn't really uh, trying to lift the boom. It was just consequence of what I was doing. So, as you guys saw from the drone video, we are on the edge of a big lake here, and there is no road right close by. I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, too. So, I've been discussing with the property owner and the uh, contractor that's been working for him here about cutting us a road out of here since there's nothing. This thing is basically marooned here until such a road is built. But, yeah, supposedly the next time I come back here, I think we're going to have a road cut through here and a place to get the big chicken out of here. Gotta love them old Detroits. This thing runs great. Thank you.